Hi, uh, this is Mehmet Halsin. Welcome to Chapter 4 uh, of uh, Revenue Management Series, is uh, Differential Pricing. Uh, differential pricing is, uh, is the actually core of the revenue management, is the practice of seller charging different prices to different buyers for the same product or slightly different version of the same product. Uh, we also sometimes call this a price discrimination. But before we start to uh, explore differential pricing, let's look at the 10 principles of uh, uh, managing revenue. This is a sense of summarization of ideas we discussed in the pr previous chapters. This is a, just a combination of everything we talked so far. The first, we said that uh, businesses are or should be in the business of uh, creating value for their customers, right? So because of that, successful business always focus on the customer's needs. They don't focus on their own approaches, like a you know, cost-based uh, approach or the accounting approach or, or return on investment approach, etc. You should always focus on the customers and their needs to be in order to be successful. And we need to understand that consumers make decisions on, on the base on their perception of value that is very important because if you if if they don't perceive perceive any value in their transaction they are not going to go for it so what does that means the true value of a product or service equal to what buyer will willing will uh, willingly pay for it which means it doesn't matter what you think your product or service is worth if there is no one to pay for it it doesn't mean anything. So you need to create a value for your consumers, for customers, for guests that they are willing to pay for that amount. Otherwise, you're not going to be in business. Uh, we talked about, if you remember, tangible versus intangible benefits, uh, actually not versus tangible benefits plus intangible benefits. Uh, from the pursued value perspective. So product quality is important, but service quality considering we are in the hospitality business is as much, sometimes more important than product quality as well. So what we said that overall, product quality, tangible benefits, service quality, intangible benefits or price uh, might directly impact buyer's perception of value, right? So chain, we always talk about the prices, but also increasing product quality or service quality also increases buyer perception of value. Uh, price also we consider uh, as a simply number, but in reality is a powerful to uh, signal both buyers and sellers. Uh, uh, basically, it gives message to, uh, uh, to buyers and sellers. Um, different, this is an important aspect once again related also to differential pricing different people different buyers uh, place different values do you remember from like for example uh, auction uh, uh, discussion we did like you know everybody's bids but in the end one wins the prize because one is willing to pay that price but if there are more than several uh, products or different version of products there will be more buyers willing to pay different prices for them. And we also, in the end, said uh, what we call the strategic pricing is application of data and insight or science and insight. Basically, you need to use also pricing, but also you need to use insight, your experience. That your job needs to be many strategies that's going to match prices or your prices to the buyer's perception of value and willingness to pay. So they will be say yes, it's a good value for me, and they it, value for me, and they're gonna come to your uh, property and pay for that amount. And in the end, uh, we said that revenue managers are in the business of optimizing businesses' income and profits. So let's look at the differential pricing. But first, let's look at the different kind of uh, pricings, right? We define uh, 
value-based pricing as the practice of establishing prices for a firm's product and services based primarily on the buyer's pursued value of those products and services. Uh, some hospitality professionals still uh, might argue for uh, fixed pricing, like we discussed this in the previous chapters, right? For example, uh, accounting approach of uh, uh, formula-based pricing, such as cost basic pricing or uh, return on investment approach. Similarly, from marketing approach, such as penetration pricing, demanding, demand pricing, or competition pricing is also used. All of them, one way or another, is uh, recommend fixed pricing. So, where sellers charge basically the same price to all buyers. This is sometimes referred to as flat or uh, single pricing as well. Now, differential pricing, on the other hand, as the name implies, offer different pricing to different customers depending on their characteristics. More formally, we call that differential pricing is the practice of seller charging different prices to different buyers for the same product or slightly different version of the same product. Let's, let's start with the, some uh, uh, example. Now, in this scenario, we will assume that our research shows typical traveler willing to pay $150 for a room. By the way, this, in, in I mean, I, I got exactly what the book shows. Sometimes we use price in the uh, uh, horizontal and the uh, room sold in the vertical, but in this case, is, uh, is, uh, they put the price in the bottom. It's, it doesn't make any difference though. But let's let assume in this scenario, if you look at here, that, um, let me see, regular average people are willing to pay, a typical traveler, willing to pay $150. By the way, we put the 75 here because uh, they assume that $75 is the variable cost for the room. Under this scenario, they were able to sell 250 rooms and also uh, they assume there is a 500 rooms is available. Now, if price is very low, let's say it's close to zero or let's say close to $1, they sell out every room. If close to $225, only few, almost zero will be sold. That's what this creates the demand, right? Demand curve. Now, assume that uh, we, we, we are going to sell for $150 per room. Uh, this example assumes that 250 rooms are going to be sold, which means occupancy is going to be 50%. Let us do some uh, basic calculations. First, uh, let's calculate the ADR. ADR is the total room revenue divided by total room sold, right? So how many rooms we are uh, selling in this case? 250 rooms. And how much is the each room? $150 per room, which is, uh, is going to be divided by the 250 rooms sold. If you calculate that, $37,500 divided by 250, which is going to give us $150 uh, ADR. And if you calculate the rev bar, that is going to be total revenue divided by total rooms available for sale. We are going to do the similar calculation, 250 rooms times 150 is 37,500. But this time we're going to, instead of uh, in ADR, we, we focus on the total rooms sold. We are going to focus on the total rooms available, which is 500, which makes the $75 uh, for the rev bar. And let's calculate the GOP bar as well. Uh, GOP bar is the total revenue minus management controllable expense divided by the total rooms available. Uh, total revenue was 37,500 and we uh, assumed following this example is cost $75 per room. So 250 rooms sold times 75 divided by the 500 rooms available for sale gives us the GOP bar which is the $37.50. Now, before I'm going to give you a little bit more detailed example on the differential pricing, assume there are people willing to pay $225, which the 
which in this case, in here, for example, right, they are willing to pay up to $225, this area. What we call is the consumer surplus because they pay less than $225 because of the fixed price. But why we gonna pay, why the people pay this amount, we're gonna discuss in a few minutes, so you shouldn't worry about it right now. So what we are saying here is consumer surplus is the difference between the amount a buyer would be willing to pay for a product or service and the amount they are charged. I mean, they are willing to pay more, but the price is 150. I mean, <laughs> why are you gonna pay additional, right? The C, that was the B. The C, on the other hand, here, presents people, they don't wanna pay 150 because they cannot afford or whatever their reasoning, they are not willing to pay 150, but might be willing to pay less amount. Why is cut? at this here because that's the cost of uh, uh, per room $75 so if we sell the room less than $75 we are going to lose money so minimum we can sell is $75 now let's do some calculations let's do like uh, let's do some kind of minimal differential pricing strategy Let's say you decide to implement simple three price strategy at your hotel. By using this pricing strategy, you assign three rates, low, regular, and high. The low rate is, is set at $100 per night, and the high rate is set $200 per night, and regular rates remain at $150. Now, this approach assumes the hotel continues to sell 250 uh, regular uh, rate, uh, uh, rooms per night. In addition, assume that 100 low price rooms can be sold per day. This low price captures people who did not pay 250. And also that uh, kind of effective marketing and slight uh, 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 differentiations of the product we were able to also sell 25 high price rooms per, per day. Now, under this assumption, the hotel would sell 375 rooms per night. Okay, I mean, look, if you look at it here, this, this is the first area is the single price approach, right? We just calculated all this. The second area is the tiered pricing. We got low, regular, and high prices. Let's look at quickly here. We said that we are going to, by the way, there is nothing changing in regular price. We still assume that we are able to sell 250 rooms. We get to some creative marketing, some of the, the special offers, etc. We were able to get 25 people uh, it, it, the paying high uh, price, 200 room. And also we offer some kind of discounts, which we're going to talk uh, why it does matters. But uh, we were able to also get 100 more people. And I want you to look at ADR. Now, in the first single price scenario, ADR is 150, but in the, this three uh, tier pricing model, 140. So our ADR is dropped a little bit. If you look at it, this is $10, which is about uh, close to negative 6.7%. It's dropped 6.7%. But if you look at the GOP part, gross operating per available room, it was 37.50. Now it's become 48.75, almost 30% increase. So while ADR is a little lower, GOPAR is increased. So the point here is thoughtful and informed analysis of changes in hotels ADR or REPAR, uh, whatever an increase or decrease, can only properly undertaken if you consider GOPAR analysis as well. But the point here, compared to uh, the discussion we just made, any consumer surplus captured represents 100% profit for a business and it can only be captured via the use of differential pricing. Okay, so as you can see here, single pricing and uh, single pricing example versus three tier, which is three tier is uh, a very basic minimal approach. 
and uh, sometimes we use much uh, complicated versions but you can see that our uh, uh, operating profit almost increased 30 percent now what we need to implement uh, that differential pricing what's the required condition there are two major things one is the information as a for example in our case in the, this hotel should be able to identify different demand condition among different customers or group of customers basically what we are saying is you should know your customers your market demand conditions and much more and the second required condition able to do this differential pricing is the enforcement so the hotels must be able to segment the market so those who do not qualify for the lower prices cannot buy from the lower prices i mean why the 200 dollar paying person is not going to pay 100 dollar or why the 150 dollar paying person not uh, why why they are not going to buy 100 dollar why they're going to pay 50 dollars so how will you do that you utilize the things what we call is the fences we will uh, talk them some uh, in a minute but let's let's talk about a uh, little bit about the limits first if this is a very good why don't we always always use it right first it's not easy some buyers willing to pay doesn't mean they will pay if lower price is available i just told you now what is the limits first is the imperfect knowledge uh, i mean we don't know exact willingness uh, to pay of the people and it's very hard to estimate i mean you have to understand we talk we just talk about three uh, minimal three uh, differential pricing approach three tier but there are sometimes hundreds of different rate options it's not even considering uh, like your competitions and etc right so imperfect knowledge we don't know everything going on their demands their characteristics their willingness to pay so that's the one of the important thing so better knowledge you have better you can implement differential pricing second thing is the cannibalization i mean i'll just give you an example like similarly there are people uh, high willingness to pay so basically they can pay and they are okay to pay but why they gonna pay if there is a discounted price it creates cannibalization which means like uh, you without the fence you created the different tiers the people at the hundred and fifty dollar willingness to pay the customers gonna go and buy from hundred dollar you lose people from the hundred and fifty dollar tier this, that's what called the cannibalization uh, there is also arbitrage issue uh, because sometimes people buy low and sell to higher sometimes almost simultaneously I mean as the example is going to be like uh, uh, OTAs like for example I mean OTA is also distribution channels that that's help but it also creates problem when you uh, create the lower prices some people can grab at the lower price and sell it at the higher price the last one is actually the is also be uh, one of the chapters the question of legality or ethics now ethics is uh, how can an organization charge different prices for what is same or essentially the same product or service related question is is it fair to do so now how can you do that of course uh, we're going to talk about future chapters but uh, you can seek it to increase this revenues let's say you, you are offering five dollar pizzas but you can uh, given a uh, restriction only one customers can uh, take this and they have to buy at least three of them or let's say uh, you're gonna play golf you can get a discount if you are two off between 8 a.m. or let, let's say before 8 a.m. or after 4 p.m. right or uh, you might say for example uh, senior discount if you are 62 or older like what we call that that things we I just told you is price fence that that specific requirements that describe who is and is not eligible for spe special pricing offer uh, we also call this hurdle or barrier uh, but let's not forget uh, price fence must be legal okay that's the important legal easy for the seller to explain so basically people not gonna complain why they are doing that 
it has to be easy to explain and also easy to, easy to seller to explain or easy to buyer to understand why they are doing that and it should be acceptable to them. Uh, what are we talking about? Like what kind of uh, things? Uh, overall, I mean, there are, by the way, wide variety of important ways that uh, uh, differential pricing strategies can be applied. But this strategy is usually grouped in the eight broad categories, uh, just uh, following the book uh, uh, example. The first one is the customer characteristic, right? Uh, senior citizens, student, students, families, uh, like, you know, you are, it depends on where you're going, but frequent uh, uh, customers, favored customers, like loyalties, uh, members of select organization, like AAA, uh, if you have a, a possession of a special coupon or special offer. So how are you going to uh, check them out? Like, for example, using ID to verify age. Like, it could be one of the ways. So this is... This is the customer characteristic, basically different characteristic. There are many, many, many different characteristics you can. Uh, by the way, I'm just giving few examples. You can read more details in in, in the book, uh, in this example. By the way, you always should read your chapters anyway. Uh, in these videos, I'm just going over some uh, 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 basic examples. Is is the uh, I'm I'm not able to cover everything in the book anyway. You should be be sure to read your uh, uh, books. The second thing is the location, right? Location is important. I mean. Uh, water at the airport or beer at the football game is not the same or the hotels at the Manhattan versus uh, hotel at the uh, middle of nowhere is the same, right? So location is important. Location could be also a different way. For example, let, let's say we are in the uh, uh, Orlando with the, all the, the parks. Parks might offer locals season, season pass, but if you are living somewhere else, you cannot buy. You know, they require you to, for example show your uh, uh, address or ID. Give you an example of the location as a restriction. Uh, time is important, right? There are highly discounted uh, times. Like for example, we went to movie uh, yesterday, actually a couple days ago on Tuesday, it was half price. Airlines also use this, like red, red eye flights, like you know, the early bird discounts. Uh, business hotels versus leisure hotels use this also because there's Business people go different uh, time, like usually in the weekdays, and the le leisure hotels is usually, or leisure people usually go to hotels on the weekends, just to give you an example. Um, quantity is important. Uh, we offer a lower price usually for large purchases. I mean, actually some restaurants actually increase the price that's called service charge but the idea is quantity is important to uh, impact the differential pricing now distribution channel is also other thing right the source of business customers or the vehicle to communicate with source of customers uh, we are talking about of course like for example OTAs the, the, the online travel agents we are talking about the central reservation systems we are talking about the, the own properties, PMS, property management systems. And people can come email you directly, phone, direct, walk-in, internal referral, etc. Now, uh, I added this uh, uh, net room rate uh, calculations because, especially in the distribution channels, you have to consider two important things. What is the net room rate? Let us let assume... You your uh, hotel room rate is hundred dollar, but uh, using the OTA, people comes OTA is gonna charge you right. Let's say they charge ten dollars. So if your standard ADR is hundred dollar and distribution channel cost is ten dollars, net room rate is going to be ninety dollars. If you get the ninety dollars net room rate in the formula above, divided the standard ADR, you get a ninety percent net ADR yield. So you. The point here in the distribution channels, you should always consider your net ADR yield. I mean, if the if it's costing you more uh, in the OTA use of, for example, in the use of OTA, sometimes it doesn't make sense. But if the OTA is accessing the people that normally you cannot access, then it makes sense. But the point here, you should always consider your net room rates or net ADR yields. Um, 
What else here? Uh, product versioning, like single, double, suit, first class, business class. Like you can add features, you can subtract features, you can add a service to a product or offer many of choices. Single queen versus double queen. I mean, think about your iPhone, right? You are buying, I don't know, uh, the. I'm not really following up, but I believe it's like 128 gigabyte versus 256 gigabyte storage. Is cost $100 difference. Do you think it's cost iPhone $100? Probably like $5, $6. But adding, creating a version, different version, is exactly the same phone, just a little bit additional feature on it. And uh, is, is generates a lot of money for them. Uh, next one is the bundling. Combining individual products and or services into groupings that are sold for a single price. Usually low, lower than the sum of the prices charged. Uh, if, the same in, if the same items included uh, were purchased individually. Like this is a kind of package. It's also uh, impact uh, differential pricing. And payment terms are also important. Right? How they pay. Credit cards, cash, when they pay. Sometimes, if as, especially working with the groups or, or travel agents, uh, they can pay 30 days, 6 days, 90 days later. So these are the, some of the uh, uh, factors that uh, impact differential pricing. In the end, revenue management versus or revenue optimization. Uh, it is an active strategic process requiring extensive tactical and insightful decision making, right? It requires a focus on buyers and predicting buyer demand in response to the management strategic pricing decision. Uh, it entails the effective management of available product inventory to maximize potential revenue. So in the end, it is primary goal is optimizing a business profits. Yes. Uh, you want to do revenue management, of course, but revenue optimization is focus on the business profits and in the long term, more strategically. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, it's clarified what the differential pricing is, especially the example. And uh, you all have a good day.